السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I am Dr. مصطفى صلاح الدين محمد. Lecture at Moscow Skater in College Unit for Sobatic Department, Cairo University. Today, our topic is about chondrosarcoma of bone. Chondrosarcoma, the primary sarcoma of bone, with cartilage differentiation. It is the third most common primary carcinoma of bone after multiple myeloma and the osteosarcoma. Age group here is in middle age and elderly population. There is different spectrum of chondrosarcoma from primary chondrosarcoma of bone or secondary chondrosarcoma. Secondary chondrosarcoma, it means malignant transformation of previously benign neoplasms like inchondroma, osteochondroma, Ulier's disease or radiation induced. It's more common in multiple Ulier's disease and the Mafuchi syndrome rather than in solitary inchondroma or osteochondroma. Also, malignant transformation is more common in flat bones like in the pelvic bone and shoulder vertebrae rather than in appendicular skeleton. Primary chondrosarcoma is a central chondrosarcoma, which is more common both surface chondrosarcoma, which is rare. Central chondrosarcoma has four histopathological types. The most common is the conventional central chondrosarcoma of bone with high line cartilage, most commonly low grade to intermediate grade and less commonly high grade. Dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma means cells of pleomorphic, like spindle cells, with high grade differentiation, prognosis here is bad, survival from 5 to 10 percent. Here, survival is better. Clear cell chondrosarcoma, it's of low grade chondrosarcoma of clear cell pattern. It's also called chondroblastoma of the adult if it's of specific epiphyseal location. Mesenchymal chondrosarcoma is a high grade one with round cell. Neoplasm, so it's the only type which is chemosensitive. Five year survival is 45%. So, the common location for conventional chondrosarcoma is the metaphysis of long bones or flat bones, like in pelvic bone, shoulder girdle, ribs, and less common in the spine and the craniofacial location. Usually, we may see central calcification in low grade pattern or intermediate grade. However, in high grade chondrosarcoma, radiologically, it's purely little. Grossly, chondrosarcoma, it contains cartilage matrix, which is glistening, bluish, white in color, with areas of central degeneration. Sometimes myxoid tissues may be present with areas of destruction, even extra osseous involvement and extent. Microscopically, the cells are polyhedral with variable degree of pleomorphism and mitotic figures. The most important is invasiveness pattern of the cartilage inside the bone. This is typically histopathological confirmation between low-grade chondrosarcoma and the cellular inchondroma is the invasiveness pattern inside the bone. There is a radiologic criteria for risk of malignant transformation, features suggestive of malignancy. Here, this is classic picture of inchondroma, small size, no features suggestive of invasiveness, central calcification, no industrial scalloping like here, cortical breakdown. These are suggestive of malignant transformation and low grade chondrosarcoma. Also, other criteria for invasiveness is bone dilatation and the large segment of bone. This is radiological criteria for malignancy. 
clinical evaluation with different clinical scenarios, as we see later, varying from an accidentally discovered lesions with an inchondroma, or patients complaining of pain and swelling, patients presenting with pathologic fractures or whoops lesions. We will go for clinical assessment, history taking, clinical examination, radiographic evaluation for plain X-ray, metaphysial legion, lytic, destructive, ill-defined, solitary, bone scan, do MRI whole bone with contrast, not to miss skip lesions, CT chest without contrast to assess for metastasis. As we say, chondrosarcoma is an intermediate or low grade. So it may take a longer period of time when compared to conventional osteosarcoma. Also tendency for distant metastasis is late and less common than in osteosarcoma. Biopsy and histopathological confirmation is a must. Core biopsy is a standard in musculoskeletal oncology. It's sensitive in 95% of cases. However, in cartilage lesion, it may miss areas of high grade of differentiation. So MRI evaluation to assess for the better location for core biopsy. Treatment options, only surgery. As chondrosarcoma, by definition, is chemoresistant and radioresistant. The only type of chondrosarcoma which is chemosensitive is the mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. Dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma may receive chemotherapy as a part of palliative treatment, as bad prognosis. So the only treatment here is surgery. Wide resection is a must for conventional chondrosarcoma, mostly limb salvage, very rare indication for amputation in chondrosarcoma. In low-grade chondrosarcoma and confirmed histopathologically, I could go for extended carotage and adjuvant. Prognosis and the five-year survival in conventional chondrosarcoma is about 75 to 80%. In mesenchymal chondrosarcoma, 45%, and the dedifferentiated is 5 to 10%. First clinical scenario is the accidentally discovered lesion, like in inchondroma. But when with clinical evaluation, I see tenderness inside the bone, radiologic suggestion of invasiveness, like industrial scalloping cortical breakdown or large size lesion, I will go for further evaluation by MRI, CT, and core biopsy. If proved to be of low-grade chondrosarcoma, just only for extended carotage and adjuvant. If recurrence occurred, which is 5% of cases, I will go for wide resection. The most common clinical scenario is pain and swelling in middle and elderly age population, lytic lesion with or without calcification, cortical breakdown, ill-defined, extraskeletal soft tissue component, MRI evaluation, proper staging, core biopsy, and finally, treatment option here is wide resection with different modalities for reconstruction. Pathologic fractures, we have two scenarios, either non-displaced fracture or displaced fracture. Here, fracture over a sarcoma, it carries risk for tissue contamination of different compartments inside the limb. So it carries a risk for higher risk of local recurrence, but it does not affect the overall survival. So when I see a patient with a crack, non-displaced fracture, clinical evaluation, plain X-ray, splinting for the limb, complete staging with MRI and biopsy is proved to be low-grade chondrosarcoma. I will go for extended heritage adjuvant and the minimal fixation to minimize risk of contamination. 
However, if after the staging proved to be a conventional or high-grade chondrosarcoma, here the crack or minimally displaced fracture with less risk of tissue contamination, I could go for limb salvage treatment by a wider margin of resection here in such case if the shoulder capsule is affected i will go for extra articular resection resecting the whole proximal humerus with the pinoid here i will go for a wide resection with muscle compartments i will be more aggressive in margins to minimize the risk of local recurrence If displaced fractures occurred, I will go for splinting, staging, biopsy. If confirmed to be of low grade, I will go for extended carotid adjuvant and fixation, but with a risk, higher risk of local recurrence. But if proved to be conventional chondrosarcoma or high grade chondrosarcoma with markedly displaced fracture, with more risk for contamination of the muscle compartments and the neurovascular bunk with fracture malignant hematoma. The only wise, better oncologic result here is amputation. Oops, lesions, it means histological surprise. It's common in chondrosarcoma, as the age group here is middle age and elderly. Patient coming in the casualty with a pathologic fracture with lytic lesion in the proximal femur, the surgeon without routine staging and biopsy go for intramedullary fixation and inside the operation we take a tissue biopsy for histopathological confirmation, which surprisingly checked as chondrosarcoma. Here, the procedure makes more tissue contamination. The entry here will contaminate the abductor muscle group, also reaming by intramedullary nailing or reaming by DHS increases the risk of blood-borne metastasis, which affects survival. In such cases, amputation is important with a radical margin, excision for the whole compartment to get better results. Thank you.